Welcome back. In this video, we are going to uh, see how we can modify our design for a VJTD FAMP uh, in order to increase the CMRR. Our original design included a tail resistor R, and uh, we determined that if we increase the tail resistance by adding a current source at the tail, for example, uh, we could increase our CMRR. So I'm going to uh, go ahead and replace the tail resistor with a current source. Everything else remains the same. And uh, we have different current sources, current mirrors that we have studied, uh, but we're going to start with the basic one, the basic mirror. So just going to append a basic MPN mirror. Notice that the, at the bottom of my mirror is now going to a negative supply, negative 15 volts, because our original design was operating from a dual supply plus minus 15 volts. Uh, my transistor, oops, Q1, is a diode connected transistor. Um, and then essentially I have a resistor going to uh, some voltage and I'm going to go ahead and connect it to ground. This is my reference resistor. I'm going to call it resistor R. Um, you could have tied the resistor to the positive supply, uh, which nothing that says that you couldn't. Um, but this way, uh, if we tie it to ground, we'll have a smaller voltage across the resistor. Um, and so therefore we will need a smaller resistance value uh, to generate the same current. So that's why I chose to connect it to ground in this case. I already have Q1 and Q2 taken, so I'm going to refer to these transistors as Q3 and Q4. And that's it. Uh, the next part of my design then consists on selecting my resistor R to set the right current flowing through that tail. This is a basic mirror, so whatever current flows through Q3 is going to get mirrored through Q4. Uh, the current through Q3 can be established as follows. We have our I reference, which is basically the current flowing through this resistor. Oh, in this case, it will be flowing the opposite direction. I reference and that's going to be equal to the voltage across the resistor divided by the resistance. The voltage across the resistor uh, is going to be uh, zero minus the voltage at this point which is uh, negative 15 plus 0.7 for the VVE drop. So it's going to be 0.7 volts um, above negative 15. So therefore I have uh, my VREF is equal to zero minus negative 15 plus 0.7 divided by R. Before, my resistor value is going to be equal to uh, 15 minus 0.7 divided by whatever reference current I want. I want to set it to 1 milliamp. So divided by 1 milli. That's going to be 14.3 uh, kilo ohms. So I'm going to enter that value in my circuit, 13.3 kilo ohms. Excellent. Now let's see how this has uh, improved our CMRR. Um, my CMRR, as always, is going to be equal to, this is a, um, a single-ended output DFAMP, and therefore my CMRR, It's going to be approximately equal to the tail resistance. I'm going to label it our tail because now we have a different resistor labeled as R, which is uh, the reference resistor for the current mirror. So just to separate them, our tail is the resistance looking into the tail, which corresponds to the output resistance of the current source. 
So R tail divided by little re plus capital R. And so in this case, my R tail is going to be equal to uh, the output resistance of uh, my current source, which is going to be equal to little arrow for Q4. Now, little arrow for Q4 is going to depend on the early voltage and the quiescent current. So I'm going to have to make some assumptions. I'm going to go ahead and write them here. So I'm going to assume my early voltage is equal to 100 volts, for example, and my data is equal to 100, just to be able to do some calculations. Uh, so my R4 is going to be equal to the A over IC. And notice that um, this is now VA and IC for transistor Q4. So VA is 100 divided by, and my current is equal to 1 milliamp. Notice that's different from the previous calculation that we made for little re, where we were using 0.5 milliamps for our uh, quiescent current, and that's because those were the little re's of transistors Q1 and Q2, and uh, each one has 0.5 milliamps flowing through them, but now when I'm referring to Q4, there is a total of 1 milliamp flowing through that transistor. So when I'm computing parameters related to Q4, small signal parameters, I'm going to be using the quiescent current for that transistor. So that would be 100 kilo ohms. And I can continue my calculation now. This will be 100k divided by 50 plus 250, or by 300, which is 333.3 for my CMRR. Uh, that would be in the linear range if I wanted to calculate it in dBs. I just need to compute 20 times the log base 10 of that number. And I get around 34 dBs. Or sorry, 50 dBs. 34 was for the, um, for the previous case. Uh, so we can see an improvement already um, in my uh, CMRR. Before I had a CMRR of 50 with the tail resistor, as indicated here. Uh, or 34 dBs, and now I have a CMRR of 333 or 50 dBs. So quite an improvement just by replacing the tail resistor with a simple basic current mirror. Um, if I wanted to get further improvement, I could choose one of the current mirrors that have a better value for the output resistance. And the, the two versions that we studied with the highest output resistance were the, uh, the Wilson current mirror, as well as the Casco current mirror. And so we're going to calculate the CMRR if we had picked a Wilson or Casco mirror in this configuration. Um, so let's go ahead and just do that. In the case of my Wilson current mirror, I will have um, my R tail, or I'm just going to refer to it as R out for the Wilson, R out is equal to beta little arrow divided by 2. And the cascode current mirror I have our out being equal to um, beta times little arrow. So let's figure out what the CMRR will be in these two cases. I'm going to go ahead and I highlight this one so we don't lose track of it. Now let's see, instead of um, connecting a basic mirror, I were to connect a Wilson current mirror uh, to my tail. I will have the following. My CMRR will be approximately equal to um, our tail, which in this case will be uh, beta times 100k divided by 2, or 50 times 100k divided by 50 plus 250, which comes out to be uh, 16,667 or 84 dBs. Uh, so a significant improvement. And then in the case of the cascode, 
uh, instead of being beta halves times little r o, it will just be beta times little r o, so 100 times 100k divided by 50 plus 250, uh, which will be twice the previous number, 33,333, or approximately 90 dB. Uh, notice that when we double uh, the CMRR in the linear range, uh, we are adding 6 dBs in the dB scale. So, um, little note here. Doubling in linear scale. Um, corresponds to plus 6 dBs in the dB scale. Um, and that's it. We have seen that uh, the higher our output resistance, the higher our CMRR. Obviously, the higher CMRR comes at the expense of um, additional transistors and perhaps some loss in uh, headroom for the current source. But in this case, we don't seem to need it. So, uh, so I would say that the, the gain that we have achieved outweighs the trade-offs in this case. Thank you.